Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do another quick video for you today and it's slightly uh, off topic of some of my normal videos um, and it's to do with this um, which if you saw my video a short while ago regarding the two new swords that I bought this is one of them, it's the Hanway Tinker Pierce um, 9th century Viking sword um, and this is a lovely little sword I've been doing a lot of drilling with it recently um, it's really comfortable, really nice to use um, the one problem I had with it is that although it's marketed as sharp um, it, it, well, it, it pretty much isn't um, certainly not as sharp as I would like um, it's not able to cut paper um, and that's something that I always look for um, in a sharp sword. It's not that's not what it's designed for, but I would like it to be sharp enough to do that. Um, now, it does have an edge on it. Um, some parts of it are better than others, and if I mean I could be wrong here, but from from my understanding, a lot of sword manufacturers and vendors. Um, will buy swords in generally blunt and then the vendor will do a sharpening job if you want a sharp version. Um, now that looks like to be the case on this one, I don't think this is a factory sharp blade, um, I can certainly see where it's been sharpened um, and some of the other manufacturers I've bought swords from in the past who do sell them sharp straight from the factory, um, they seem to do a much better job at sort of blending in the sharpened edge with the rest of the blade. Um, and as I say, it's not a problem um, and there are various ways in which you can sharpen a sword. Um, I am going to be using uh, this which is my um, Japanese water stone, um, predominantly because it's a a sharpening method that I'm familiar with. I use it for my axes, I use it for my knives, um, so it's something that I'm relatively comfortable doing. Now the difference with a, a, a long uh, sword blade is that you can't um, sort of sweep the entire blade across, you have to do it in sections, which does give you the risk of sort of it being slightly uneven, so you just need to take it a bit more carefully. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll bring the camera a bit closer in in a second and we'll just basically make a start. I'm not going to show you the whole process. Um, I'm probably looking at sort of 15, 20 minutes per side of each edge. Now it's a double-edged sword, um, so we're looking about hours worth of sharpening, if not a little bit more. Um, and I certainly won't bore you with all of that. Um, and the other quick thing I wanted to say, and um, you know, I've seen this on other sword videos and things like that, um, is that you know a lot of people have a, a, a real hang-up about having the edge completely blended into the blade, making it look you know, absolutely pristine. Um, now I'm not a historian, you know, I, I do like to dabble in doing a little bit of research on things, especially if it's something that I own or I'm gonna use. Um, and my, again, this is a personal view, but just something that I, I've picked up on some research, is that, you know, historically, you know, swords would not have been these wonderful, pristine, highly polished, perfect, um, you know, pieces of equipment. Um, you know, the, in the sort of medieval period, certainly, a lot of swords would have been polished on a grinding wheel or sharpened on a grinding wheel, uh, whether that was hand or foot powered or potentially water powered if it was coming from a, um, you know, a sort of for lack of a better term, sort of like a factory. Um, and, you know, they, they would not have been these wonderful, highly polished things. Um, and you most certainly would have seen uh, a difference between the main blade as it came out of the forge and the blacksmith um, and the edge that was put on afterwards. Um, that's not to say that people didn't, um, you know, treat them with a great deal of respect. And, you know, you, you may well find that sort of... Um, you know the, the very expensive swords and swords generally were quite an expensive piece of equipment they, they weren't a common man's weapon by any, any means um, but you know if, if, if it was being bought by a nobleman from a very well regarded swordsmith and things like that I'm, I'm sure that there would have been a lot of effort put in to making them um, you know look very nice um, certainly as they were purchased um, but you know in, in sort of you know warfare conditions um, especially sharpening in the field and things like that um, I don't generally believe that swords would have uh, would have looked the way modern reproduction swords do. That's not to say I'm not going to take care of this, and I and I will go through the process of taking some um, uh, emery cloth and things like that, and, and trying to blend that blade in a little bit, just just so that it looks a little bit nicer. Um, but historically wise, I, I don't think that was as much of a concern as, as we make it today. Anyway, guys, that's enough of me rambling on. I'm going to move the camera a bit closer in, and we will make a start. Okay guys, so here's my setup, um, and one thing I should have mentioned earlier is 
if you are sharpening a sword, make sure you wear gloves. Um, one of the interesting things that a lot of people don't realise um, is that with a blade like this, you've got obviously this is a, a, a semi-sharp edge at the moment, and what I'll be doing is holding on to this with the palm of my hand, and I will be guiding it over my stone. Now, if you're putting pressure on a sharpened blade, as long as it's not particularly heavy pressure, um, you're, you're pretty well set for not cutting yourself. Um, because a blade won't generally cut into you unless you're, you're actually running your hand along that blade. So really, it's keeping one particular section of the blade held and then you'll basically put it onto your stone exactly the same way you would if you were sharpening a knife or an axe. You find that sort of bevel point and then you literally just run your blade across the stone. And what you'll find, hopefully that'll pick up on the camera here, um, at the top edge here you can see the discoloration where the slurry from the stone, hopefully that's picking up a lot on the light there, um, but you'll see where the slurry is leaving um, a line, and that is the line that will become my edge. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just, as I said, I'm not going to bore you with all of this, but I'm just going to spend a little bit of time just working on this part of the edge, um, and then we'll uh, cut back and I'll show you how I'm getting on. Right then guys, so that's been about half an hour's worth of work. I've done about 15 minutes on either side. Um, and what I wanted to show you was if you look at the top portion up here of this blade, that's the factory finish, that's how it's arrived at me. And if I flip it over, the what is now the top side is the new finish. And hopefully you can see there's probably a three millimeter sort of section all the way across the top of this blade um, where I've been sharpening it. Um, now, it, I mean, I've got gloves on, but it does feel slightly sharper, um, though obviously it's much more noticeable. And I've done that on both sides of this top edge. So I'm gonna bring this back down here. Um, and so it's the, it's the edge closest to you on the camera. Um, in fact, I may even bring you a little bit closer, just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and what I've done, I've just got a little piece of 400 grit wet and dry paper here. Um, and all I'm gonna do is just spend a couple of minutes. Um, and I'm just gonna raise this up slightly as well, just so I can reach it a little bit better. Um, and I'm just gonna spend a couple of minutes. And what this will do, it will slightly refine that edge. And it will also start to blend that kind of three millimeter mark into the rest of the blade. Now you need to use um, just a very small piece. I've got a piece here that will just fit over my thumb um, and you need to be very, very careful when you do this. You don't want to push towards the blade. You actually just want to run up and down, but you need to make sure that you're going on the top part of the blade here, not actually putting your thumb directly on the edge. If your thumb does come into contact with that hard edge, there is a very good chance you'll cut yourself. Now you don't need to put a lot of pressure on with this. I mean, literally I'm just rubbing up and down very, very lightly. Um, you don't need to really, really kind of wet, um, you know, put loads of pressure on. Um, and it is, this is a, a very gradual thing. It's not something you're looking to do very quickly. Um, you just want to take your time over it. Best thing I've found is that, you know, do this outdoors in a workshop, in your garden, well away from TV, people who are going to talk to you, people who are going to sort of, you know, essentially disturb what you're doing. And I tend to do this just in sections. You know, I'll take a, a, a three or four inch section down the bottom here. I'll start there and then I'll very gradually work my way up. And hopefully, I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick this up, but directly on, um, from, sort of from this section between here and here, hopefully you can see that we are starting to now blend back in, in comparison to say the section that's under my hand down here. Um, so really this is a, a, as I say, a slightly lengthy process, but it will give huge rewards by the time you finish doing this. Um, what you can also do 
um, with the wet and dry paper um, you can moisten it slightly if you want I tend not to until I've given at least one full pass of the sword um, and then I'll probably moisten it and go over again so I'll carry on doing this for probably another 15 minutes or so to get both edges done 15 20 minutes um, and I'll come back and show you what we look like after that Right then guys, so we're done. Um, I have completely finished the sharpening process on one edge, um, and that is the top edge as you're looking at this. Um, so what I'll do, I'll bring this down here. Hopefully this kind of picks up okay on the camera. And again, you can see the edge where I've been sharpening it. You know, I've blended it a little bit, but it's not massively pretty. Um, and again, if I just flip over to the other side here, um, this edge I've done a little bit of work on but nowhere near as much and it still needs some work um, but all in all I'm pretty pleased with this um, just by feel alone this top edge is extremely sharp in comparison to the other which is still it is sharp but it still feels slightly dull so I need to do some more work on that and what I think I'll do um, for my next video I will get my GoPro out which I'm still learning to use I'm still trying to figure out some of the settings and the best way to uh, to use it um, but what I will do I'll do a little bit of test cutting with this sword um, I won't touch this other edge until I've done that video so I can show you the sharp edge um, and then I can show you the difference between a really sharp edge and a slightly duller edge for sort of test cutting purposes uh, but anyway guys hope it was useful um, Click like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.